Having good money habits can make a huge difference in your financial future. If you just finished school, you got a new job, and you wanna buy a home, having good money habits is especially important. So what are some of the money habits that you should develop? Today, I wanna share with you 10 good money habits that young home buyers should develop. Number one, create goals. Money goals will make you focus on how much you want to save. Classify them into short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. Also, you need to make sure that your goals are specific, measurable, and achievable. Don't forget to review and update your goals from time to time when your personal or financial situation changes. Number two, track your spending. Tracking your spending on a regular basis can give you an accurate picture of where your money is going and where you would like it to go. There are many ways to track your spending. Some people still prefer to use an app and some people prefer to use a separate spending account. Find the way that works for you and start tracking today. Number three, automate your savings. Rather than trying to remember to set aside money every month, consider setting up automatic transfers or deductions. If you're on a set schedule to save regularly and automatically, then you're more likely to save your money. Number four, forget about expensive cars. I'm saying it with so much pain, but I have to say it. The more debts you have, the less money you can borrow from a lender. It's that simple. A big monthly car payment will significantly decrease your borrowing power from a lender. So think twice before buying that beautiful G80 M3 with that monster S58 engine. I mean, it's all wheel drive, twin turbo. Sorry, let's get back to the video. Number five, build an emergency fund. Having an emergency fund in place will give you a cushion for any emergencies. Have enough money to pay for at least three months of expenses to avoid any unforeseen circumstances. Make sure to not use this money for any other purposes. Keep it strictly for emergencies. Number six, review your finances regularly. You need to have a clear image of what your financial situation is to help you achieve your goals. Some of the questions that you can ask yourself are, is there a cheaper phone plan I can go to? Are there any subscriptions that I can cancel? And can I put aside more money to savings moving forward? Number seven, use credit cards wisely. If you don't use your credit cards wisely, you might end up racking up debt and hurting your credit score. First of all, you should be aiming to pay off your balance in full every month. And if you can't make the payment in full, at least pay the minimum payment. Secondly, make sure to check your statement for errors. And finally, make sure you're shopping around for credit cards that suits your needs. For example, if you travel a lot, you might wanna get a credit card that offers travel insurance. Number eight, make a budget. What are the benefits of budgeting? Well, first of all, it gives you a control over your money. It beats the spend and hope approach where you're spending like crazy, you don't know how much that's left in your bank at the end of the month, and you're hoping that you have enough to pay your bills. Secondly, budgeting also makes it easier so you can stay on top of your debts and make sure you're paying your payments. Budgeting also makes it easier for you to stay aware of your savings and your debts. Also, budgeting can show you where your money issues are likely coming from. If you're seeing money issues, make sure you address them before they get out of control. Thinking proactively about money will save you a lot of stress in the long run. Number nine, pay bills on time. Not only will paying bills on time save you on late fees and penalties, it will bring you financial peace and health. Not paying your bills on time can hurt your credit score, which can be a big problem when you're applying for a mortgage. Number 10, be financially literate. This simply means that you have a basic understanding of finances and have a grasp on the value of money. You can pick up a book, listen to a podcast, or watch a video. There are so many ways that you can learn about finances. The more knowledge you have, the more control you will have over your money. And finally, here's my bonus tip. Make sure you're not only saving for your down payment, but also your closing costs, which includes legal fees, land transfer tax, head or insurance fees, etc. Usually the banks treat closing costs as 1.5% of the purchase price, but some lawyers will tell you 2%. Make sure you're budgeting accordingly. Do you have any money saving tips? Comment below. And once again, thank you for watching.